to Jefferson Highlights Community Television. I'm Lori Zook. Did you ever wonder what Astro, Scooby-Doo, and Marmaduke have in common? Well, if you don't know, they're all lovable Great Danes, and today I have with me members of the Mid-Atlantic Great Dane Rescue League. Welcome, Kim, Sue, and Jen. Hi. Hi. Why don't we start out, if you can tell me a bit about the Mid-Atlantic Great Dane Rescue League, um, how long you've each volunteered there, and what you do to help. I've been volunteering with Mid-Atlantic for a little over a year. I adopted my first Great Dane a year and a half ago from Mid-Atlantic, and then I got involved with the rescue. Okay. And Sue? I've been involved with the group for between four and five years, and I, I volunteer at meet and greets, and um, I also maintain the website. Okay. And Jenny? I've been involved for about six months, and um, I'm a foster home primarily. I also do some transports and work on phone interviews for our adoption process. Great, and tell me about, a little bit about your dogs. This is Dozer. We've just adopted him a week ago. He's 11 months old, and we also have a three-year-old Dane named Siri, also adopted from Mid-Atlantic. And we just lost our eight-year-old Dane, Smokey, who was our oh. first adoptee. Sorry. Dozer is dozing, though, so he looks like uh, he's relaxing there. And Sue, you have a, a puppy. Yeah, this is uh, this is actually Jen's foster. Mm -hmm. I'm very allergic to dogs, <laughs> <laughs> but I love him anyway. You're doing um, well. Yeah, this is uh, Charlie, and Charlie's up for adoption. She's a 14-week-old Great Dane mix. Mm -hmm. We're not quite sure what she's mixed with. She's got these beautiful ears, <laughs> and she's sweet as anything, uh -huh. aren't you? See that? She's giving you a kiss. <laughs> <laughs> Such a good and girl. Jenny, right, yeah. this is Nala. She's five years old. Um, she's currently a foster sister for three of these puppies that we have right now. Uh, they are 14 weeks old, as Sue said. And they're velvet little cuties. They're learning their commands and uh, they're integrating well. So right now we're in the process of looking for their forever homes. Well, and, and I see your Dane is sitting in your lap, and I believe uh, that's a normal Dane thing. It is. Sit down. If you tell her to sit down, she backs up and finds a chair. So that's we're better off just holding her like this. Wow. <laughs> well, tell me a bit. How do Great Danes end up in rescue? People give them up for a couple different reasons. One, uh, two of the most popular reasons are that they're getting divorced, they have a lifestyle change, oh, they move. Um, okay. Many people seem to think that just because they're moving, they can't find a home that's going to accommodate their dog. So that is another reason. Um, some people say the dogs get too big. What they really mean is that they have a dog that they haven't trained properly. And yes, they do get big, and if they're not socialized and trained, they can be a little bit of a hindrance. So they need to be trained very well when they're young. Okay. All right, and tell me about fostering. I know two of you foster. Yes. Why don't you tell me a little bit, start with Jan, why don't you tell me about fostering? Um, what we do is we take Danes that are in kennel situations. Oops, she's going to take a little walk. <laughs> and um, <laughs> That's okay. abuse or neglect situations, and rather than leaving them in a kennel, we take them into our own homes with our own dogs, and in some cases with children and cats, and get them used to different environments. So when they do find their forever homes, they integrate much easier, and they've already started with their commands and getting rid of any habits that they might have acquired in their past, in their past life. Okay. All right, do you have anything you want to add to that? I do. Um, one of the great advantages <laughs> with adopting a dog that's been fostered is that you get to read their biography and you know exactly what you're getting. When I, f I have a three- and a four-year-old, and when I first adopted Smokey, we had a 20-month-old daughter mm -hmm. and a three-year-old, and we really needed to know that the dog was good with kids and well-behaved and house-trained. I had two in diapers, and I didn't want to have to potty train a puppy, too. So we got exactly what we were looking for. Well, what kind of process do you go through okay. to be selected as a foster? Because I'm sure you're probably, like most rescue yeah. groups, always Somebody looking for more fosters. Um, we have a pretty extensive process that begins with generally someone will go to our website and contact our coordinator or meet with one of our volunteers at an event. Um, after that we do a preliminary phone interview where we try to get a feel for the family and what type of dog would best suit them. Um, after that we do home inspections and reference checks and vet checks to ensure that their current pets or past pets have been well cared for as well. Okay. And then from there they get to meet the dog and we see how they get along with them. and. At times, you know, they can take their time and really make sure that they're making the best choice. So we don't have another bounce situation and we can ensure this dog is going to find, you know, its mm -hmm. forever home. Do you guys find, um, is it a trauma for this specific breed of dog coming into a rescue? I know, you know, with a lot of rescues, I would think, just like with children, they're changing homes. So how do you try to get them prepared to adapt to a new home? Well, when our first, uh, one of our dogs, Siri, had first come to our home, she was terrified. She shook. Even this one, he was terrified of men. He was terrified of everything. He'd never been socialized. Even now, he's scared to go in a pet store. And it's just part of being a foster parent is 
socializing the dog and helping them get exposed to new situations. Mm -hmm. As you can see, this one is very well socialized. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not afraid of any dogs or people, and he's great with men now, so it's just a matter of getting them, you know, repeatedly exposed to the things that make them nervous and scared. Wow. Helps them be a happier dog. They're very adorable. Mm -hmm. um, talk about training a little bit because, you know, you were saying how a lot of times they come into the homes, you know, actually they leave the homes because people didn't do the training. I'm assuming it would be fairly important because it starts, the dogs start out as little <laughs> puppies and that's a 14 week old puppy, yes. which is as big as some full size dogs. <laughs> And then they grow much larger. What, talk, talk a little bit about the educational end of what people should know before they even get a great game. Well, I would say that obedience training is critical. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, someone's tired. And, and lots of that. beds. Danes love to sleep. Uh -huh. um, obedience training is critical. If you have a beagle puppy that is not well trained, it's okay because you can just pick that dog up and move it if you need to. But a Great Dane that's decided to block your way and not move or jump up on people when they come in the house right. can actually be dangerous, even if they're being friendly. So it's just so important that you train them well. Wow. So they're good with kids once you've gotten them trained? Absolutely. Wonderful. With any dog, if you put the time and effort in and you're a knowledgeable owner, any dog can really be trained. It's a level of what kind of training. A lot of dogs need specific training with the puppies positive reinforcement, um, they get a lot of play time so they're not pent up, you know, and doing things like chewing because they have toys and they have, you know, their time to play so they're not all, you know, amped up when they are crated. We right. also do believe in crate training to protect the dog as children so they don't get into anything and hurt themselves. But even with these puppies, I've had them for four weeks now, they're starting to learn their basic commands, they're almost fully housebroken and uh, they're integrating well with cats, kids other dogs. As you can see, this is the first time these dogs have met and they're interested in each other but they're not being you know, misbehaved. Right. How many puppies do you have? I had five a couple weeks ago. I currently have three. <laughs> um, we took them in an emergency situation so sometimes we take blocks of them and then you know after the dust settles all the fo foster homes come and pick them up. But um, they're healthy now, they're doing well and we have people looking into adopting them. So. Ready for their home. Yeah, it's a happy yeah. situation, it really is. It's good to see them make so much progress so quickly. Great, and tell me, what areas does Mid-Atlantic cover? Mid-Atlantic has chapters from New York State all the way down the coast yeah. to um, South Carolina right now. Okay, so they're all, all the way down the road. East Coast. Yeah, yes. once well, in a while they stretch out. They'll pick up a dog, say, in Connecticut or whatever, but for the most part we try to stick within our states, and also we only adopt within our states. We won't adopt outside of our area. Well, so how do you get the dogs, if you get a lot of dogs in one state, <coughs> do they stay in that state or do they move to other states and how do you go about doing that? Oh, we shift them around. It depends on <laughs> who has available foster homes in their area and um, if we need to transport them, we do um, what we call Dane Train. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> like a bucket brigade. We drive to a certain point, pass a dog off. Um, yeah. drive a little bit further, pass him off until he get, reaches his final destination. And it's all yeah. done by volunteers. Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, okay. puppies came for transport also from North Carolina. Oh, they My did. My previous foster did also. So everyone drives about 60 miles and uh, they potty the puppies, give the puppies some water, get to meet everyone because we're, you know, we work out of our own homes. It's not often that we get to interact. So it's nice to put a face to the name too. And it's a fun way to spend a weekend day. Wow. So how many people in the state of New Jersey volunteer and are, you know, do you look for more volunteers? How do you get volunteers? I believe we have about 80 right now in New Jersey. Um, we look for volunteers at some of our events. We are doing a gift wrapping event at Barnes & Noble last night. I was there. And okay. people come up to see the dogs and they're interested. Little kids have questions. We also like to socialize the dogs around little kids once we know that, you know, they're safe and they're well behaved. So um, there's always events that people can come to, and there's really a position for anyone, no matter you know how intense it's going to be. If you're just going to help us with some of our fundraising, or if you're going to end up being a foster home or adopter. And quite often, people who adopt yeah. and foster also, yeah. uh, well, fosters of course are volunteers, but um, quite often people who adopt also come back to volunteer because the dogs are just so wonderful. That's perfect. <laughs> it looks like they're having fun. I'm, they I'm are. laughing because how they're just sitting on your lap yeah. and you know. It's, it's really adorable. All Danes are lap dogs. Uh -huh. They have no idea that they're these big giant things. They think they're little puppies all the time. They're really cute. And they're dying to play, which is why they're yeah, doing they're, a lot yeah, of talking. They're here yeah. they want to have some fun. He wants well, to play. So does she. Well, tell me about uh, foster failing. 
Yeah, my baby. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Look it up in the book, and there's a picture of me. And I foster failed twice with Siri and with Dozer, and we were going to foster fail with another dog, Georgia, but she unfortunately passed away before we oh. got she had, But she was also our foster, so that would have been three. Um, you know, it's a great way to get to know the dogs. A lot of times they come into your home and you bond with them because you've done so much work with them. Dozer was not an easy dog when he first met me. <laughs> and I couldn't yeah. resist him. He really just, he grew on me. I know. And I, I think we should point out that Dozer is not full grown yet. <laughs> wow. Dozer was 11 months old yesterday, so he's probably going to gain about another 30 pounds yeah. and even a couple more inches. Yeah, so. Danes grow tall for the first year and then out for the second year, so. You're not done growing yet, mister. Yeah. So mm -hmm. what is the, what's the average weight of uh, a male Dane or a female Great Dane? I guess the male could be anywhere from 130 to 160 would be average, I guess. Mm -hmm. I, I have a female at home who's almost his height, and she only weighs 87 pounds. She's so skinny. So oh, wow. they do range in size and looks. There's a lot of different colors. Mm -hmm. um, Nala's a, ma a mantle. She's a mantle, right. And her mother was a Harlequin, which is a spotted, which people often confuse for a Dalmatian. Yeah, <laughs> and or a, a very large. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Dozer's a fawn. Yeah. This one is obviously it's black. Good. There's yeah. also brindle. There's lots of different and colors. And blue. And, and <laughs> blue, right? There's people that have called me with my dogs and didn't believe they were the same breed because they just they do vary in size and shape. But they're all, they oh, all pretty much have the here. same temperament. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> she like you up, huh? She's adorable. But years ago, when I had a um, Great Danes, before I developed my allergies, um, I had a male fawn that was 175 pounds. Wow. And I've heard that dog. sometimes they get over yeah, 200. Sure. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. rare. A friend of mine has a 220 male. Oh, that's He's a very large. It's kind of out of the norm, but it does yeah. exist. Yeah. So do people stop and stare at you when they see you walking your dogs? Absolutely. Yeah. And when I have my two kids and my two dogs out, I always say we're like the traveling circus. There's somebody always going in a different direction, but you know what? And they are the best dogs for families. I trust these big guys much more than I would trust a small, nervous, shaky little dog uh, around my kids, um, you know. So how do the kids learn to adapt to the dogs? They learn to move out of the way when the dogs are walking past, or they can get knocked over. That's called being a Dane savvy kid. But you know what, even like I said, our dogs, they're, they're very gentle animals, and if they're raised amongst kids, they learn to get out of the kid's way too. My two-year-old, she just scream at him to get off the couch. He listens to her. Wow. You know, a good dog will understand that they are below the, the children in the pack, and they my dogs know that. The kids can tell them to move or get out of the way or whatever they need to do. They're never allowed to abuse them, but right, they have right. to be able to get past the dogs, too. <laughs> right, so right. the humans have to be, yep, in, co in command at all times. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And it's always important to teach your children how to behave around dogs. That's uh, that's another reason why dogs get turned in, mm -hmm. is people just assume that their kids are can do no wrong around the dogs. Mm -hmm. And it's okay to pull their ears and their tails and climb on them. And some dogs will tolerate that, but some won't. No. And so um, children need to be taught as well as the dogs need to be trained. Absolutely. During our process, we actually have brochures that we give to families that are interested call, that's called Bite Proof Your Kids, which is to teach kids and until a dog's comfortable there, you never want to put your hand in the dog's food. You want to develop a bond and trust before you do certain activities because nervousness and anxiousness is what often leads to accidents. So, you know, having that knowledge in the comfortable surroundings really does make a safer home for a dog and for a child. So is it difficult to give these dogs a bath? <laughs> <laughs> if they want to cooperate, nope, it's yeah. fine. But if they don't... <laughs> yeah. A little bit difficult, well, It's huh? easier to hose them off in the summer. Which is yeah. You chain them up nice and close to the fence, and then they really can't get away. <laughs> in the winter, we have some smelly dogs. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was okay with getting a bath, but when I had to bathe all the puppies when they came in, Oh, it was like it was a circus. I mean, I five little wet puppies trying to run away from me at the same oh. time. But you put a couple of treats down on the floor. You can kind of wash them one at a time and get through it. So great. Well, thanks. We're going to take a short break and we'll be right back. Barney likes to drink when he's thirsty, but he shouldn't drink things that could make him sick, like the stuff that's just for the car. So I keep an eye on him, and on Eddie too. We never drink anything unless mom or dad say it's okay, because they know what's best for us.
Welcome back to Jefferson Highlights Community Television. I'm here with members of the Mid-Atlantic Great Dane Rescue Week. And let's continue on. Um, what I'd like to talk about is if you can explain to me the process that people go through. Let's say they see a puppy or a Great Dane and they're interested in adopting. What kind of a process do they, I'm assuming that they probably go to a website. I think, Sue, you're the webmaster. Yes. Okay. Yeah, they would go to the New Jersey website. Um, the URL is www.magdrl-nj.com. That's okay. Bad Girl, New, New Jersey chapter. And um, they could look at the available dogs on the site, but what they really want to do is click on the link for adoption process. And that will explain the process. And on there, there's um, a, a clickable link where they can contact our state coordinator, Jen Payne, and um, they can start the process. What, what they do is um, we interview them, we um, get references, we speak to their vet, we actually go to their home. And, um, and Kim and Jen um, get involved with home checks so they can tell you more. Wow, okay, so Jen, tell me, they, they end up, they call you up and you put them through some type of a phone screen? Yes, can you tell there, me how there's that works? three of us in New Jersey currently that are doing the phone interviews. We do the preliminary phone. And what we do is we, you know, get their basic information, where they live, um, how many people in their family, if they have current pets. We check that their current pets are also neutered and that they're well behaved and that they're going to make a nice home for an incoming Dane. We okay. also ask them questions and see if they have any questions about dogs or our process or anything specific to us so we can make things more clear before anything goes further. And then um, from there, Kim, do you want to? Sure, after they fill out their um, down, adoption application, then um, we would go to their home. Uh, for instance, if we would bring a Dane, I could bring Dozer, or I would bring one of my other ones, depending on what dogs they have in their home. What we're looking for are certain things that would make the Danes more comfortable, like a, uh, everyone needs to have carpeting on their stairs, because. Danes have, you know, a little bit of a hip issue. They could fall down the stairs just because of the way they're built, so they need to have good traction. <laughs> and um, it's also a requirement to have a six-foot fence around the property. There are some exceptions, but for the most part, that's the rule. Um, Danes that jump can easily clear a four-foot fence, so it's very important to have a six-foot fence. And that's something that people need to know. Well, and what else do you look for when they go into Do you have, um, you know, so they're so big, I'm thinking, like, with the holidays coming up, can they knock things over? Sure, we want to let the uh, potential the family know about potential hazards that tail. Mm -hmm. um, Come here, buddy. They, we want to let them know about things that the Danes can get into. Sure. Dane proofing a home is very much like child proofing a home, so that might be something yeah. we can tell them about. Um, it's good for them to see what a Dane looks like in their home. Many people don't realize how big a dog like this can get yeah. until they see it in their home and they realize, you know, this is going to fit or it's not. And I have a very small house, and I have two Danes and two small kids, and they fit fine because they're, you know, pretty well controlled. But it's something that people need to see. Now, you, you brought something up. Uh, um, do you need to have a large home in order for a Dane to fit? I mean, you see big dog, you think big house. They are, for the most part, pretty mellow dogs. They need their exercise. They need their walks. Um, it's good to have a yard for the younger ones to play in, but especially as they get a little bit older and Danes mature say earlier than a lab would, labs are crazy their whole lives. <laughs> the names are crazy for two years and then they chill. Yeah. And uh, so they, they tend to not need quite as much room as you would think, but as long as they get their exercise. What about socializing these dogs? How do you, how do you, do you introduce them to a lot of different people? They're so big. Well, you know what, actually, let's go and I'm going to ask Sue. I know you're the webmaster. You post a lot of events. Why don't you tell me about some of the events and the opportunities people have to meet the Great Danes out in public? Okay, well, the uh, most common event is called a meet and greet. And typically we'll set up at a pet store or some event like the Super Pet Expo. And uh, we'll bring our Danes, um, and we'll bring bro brochures and volunteers will be there to answer questions. Um, you can come out and talk to people and, and make arrangements to uh, begin the adoption process and see what a Great Dane is like. Okay. Um, you can go to the website, and there's a, um, a link for the events, and there's a calendar with everything that we're involved with. And there's also directions to everything. Oh, well, that sounds very good. <laughs> and um, what else does the website, does it talk about great games and, and different things like health issues, for example? Does it give you an everything you need to know about great games before you adopt one? Yeah, it does have a tremendous amount of information. I lose track of what's on the website sometimes. <laughs> Over the years, there's got to be so much. Um, yeah, there is information about great Danes in general. Um, I have a lot of links that point to um, 
various references, um, their health issues, their just general information about Danes, um, about training, um, anything you can think of. Well, well, let's talk a little bit about health issues. I mean, I know that uh, specific breeds usually have certain genetic yeah. issues, things like that. Is there anything that people should know about Great Danes? Well, one of the most common things you think of with Great Danes and other giant breeds with large chests is um, bloat. And bloat is a condition where um, their um, insides actually twist. Okay. And there, there's a blockage, and when the food that they eat can't pass all the way through, and it's a life-threatening condition. So people should get to the vet right away. Yes, they right see. away. What yeah. are the signs? What are the signs of the bloat? Um, the dog oh, no. sometimes will vomit. Um, he's restless. He will nip at his sides. He just looks generally uncomfortable, and he, he might start to look a little bloated, but okay. that necess that doesn't necessarily show. Sorry. They're having a little bit of fun here. Yes. They just want to yeah. play. They, they want to play together. They've been sitting here being good for a while. They're two young to dogs. They want to get. <laughs> wow. It's impressive to see Great Danes play. Yes. <laughs> so adorable. That you so, need room for. Well. But to prevent bloat, you don't want to um, exercise them hard after eating or let them drink a lot of water necessarily. And um, we also encourage people to have raised food bowls, okay. although there's some question about whether or not that actually works. And what about, um, what about feeding? Do you feed them a special diet? Uh, Danes really do best on a very high quality food, especially okay. when they're growing. It's very important to know about day nutrition. If you have a young puppy, um, the protein content in their food is good. You don't want them to grow too fast. Right. So, um, you know, the range of, of cost of feeding, it can really range with a senior Dane. Um, we used to feed him three cups of food a day, which is really, it's a negligible amount. It didn't cost much, and even very high quality food didn't cost much. This guy right now eats 12 cups of food a day, and it's costing wow. us about $50 a week to feed him. So we're, we're anxiously awaiting the day when he slows down a little bit. And <laughs> <laughs> but it's with any hobby. You know, this is our hobby. This so this is. is where, you know, we spend our extra money. Yep. This is what we enjoy to do. So in the end, you know, the benefits definitely outweigh the costs. Right. Wow. And what do you guys, what do you love most about Great Danes? <laughs> and I want you to elaborate on that. We get to gush. <laughs> <laughs> Temperament is my favorite. It's the reason we chose a Dane. I mean, before we even knew what kind of dog we wanted, we did all those online tests, what breed suits your family best. The Great Dane came up every time. They're just a really great family dog. They want to be around people. They're not meant to be tied up outside. They need to be around their people. They're very social animals. They want to be with you at all times. They're wonderful around the kids as long as, you know, they get introduced well. I don't really ever worry about the dogs snapping at them or anything they're just very gentle gentle dogs they're wonderful family dogs now do these guys where do they sleep they have beds everywhere <laughs> <laughs> um, some people let their Danes on the couch I'm one of the mean people that won't because <laughs> oh. <laughs> a Dane on the couch means no people on the couch, on the couch yeah. and they take over all their own space and so yes. forth yes but we have plenty of beds yeah. for them they definitely are couch potatoes they love to rest Good they girl. love to lounge around <laughs> They hang out in the house and they wait for the excitement to happen. And if it doesn't, they just hang out some more. What kinds of, um, if people wanted to volunteer, how does your organization work? What kinds of volunteer positions can people volunteer to do? Anything you could possibly think of, transports or fostering or the home evaluations, the phone evaluations, um, the phone interviews. You could just really, anything that you can dedicate a little bit of time to works. I mean, even Sue can't have a dog because of her allergies, but she still is a huge part of Magdal. She's our, mm -hmm. our web mistress and, you know, she, she makes yeah. the whole website tick, so. But one thing that we always need are foster homes because um, without a foster home, quite often we have to turn dogs away and we really don't want to do that. Right. You know, on, on rare occasions we will put a dog in kennel. Great Danes do not do well in kennels. They need to <laughs> they be, need around to be around people. people all the time. Yeah. So they're, they're if I remember right, they're called Velcro dogs. Right. Because they, they are, want to yeah. be glued to you. And I see that here because these guys, they just want to play. Yeah. And, and the puppy, I think, has fallen asleep. And yeah. That's yeah, one thing that wonderful. I love about Great Danes is that they love their excitement. She likes to go hiking with me. She likes to be outdoors. But I can bring her around children. I can bring around cats. And then as soon as the party's over and I'm tired, so is she. And everybody takes a nap. So it works out well, too. <laughs> because like it's enough. not something that I'm constantly having to entertain my dog. I can live my life and right. enjoy it with her as my companion. I don't have to work and go out of my way, you know, to keep her occupied. Because she enjoys 
playing and you know interacting with other people, but she doesn't need constant right. stimulation. They want to be with us, and that's for a lot of for the most part. That's a lot of entertainment. Yeah. Just for them. Right, they're talking. Uh -huh. It looks like they're talking. <laughs> Danes are not great guard dogs in that they'll pretty much let anyone in your house to steal your furniture, but at the same time, that bark and that look is open enough yeah. to deter anybody. Uh -huh. That's it. They're adorable. I want to thank you all. Thank you all for coming today. And now, the website was www.magdrl, M A G D R L hyphen nj.com. Correct. Yes. And the phone number for you to be contacted I have is 732. Seven four nine three eight one seven. Yeah. So again, Mid Atlantic Great Dane Rescue League. If you're looking to foster, adopt, or um, help out the group, um, you can give them a call. Thank you, Kim, Sue, and Thank Jen you. for being Thank here today. You. Thank you. And thanks for joining us on Jefferson Highlights Community Television. I'm Lori Zook.